Columbia. Okay, so this is a 9.3% red ale. Red I Imperial Red IPA, right? So here we go. I think this out of a wine glass here. Mega smoke. All right. Okay, so I've had a few of the beers from Parallel 49. I've had their sampler pack with, uh, they have a Indy Pale Lager, their Operation Black Hops, uh, a few of their beers, and uh, they seem to bring some pretty boombastic heads, so, you know, uh, so far it's been pretty good, actually, so... Almost crazy head, almost like uh, Carapil's Malt Suspicions or something. So I got the R2-D2, uh, the R2 unit here. So uh, been converting R2-D2 into a kegerator. So we got the Coca-Cola keg. Uh, I got the spray foam somewhat up in the top. I got a spray foam the other half. I got the chill plate from the re refrigerator. I dismantled the entire refrigerator, cut it all open, took the lines out. That's all in underneath the R2 unit. So it's plugged in, it chills. I have the CO2 bottle, all I need is the lines hook up in my regulator valve, right? So, uh, pretty soon I'll be doing some all grain projects, be airing that. I got uh, uh, my pasta maker today, so that'll be getting converted into grain mill, you know what I'm saying? So, I got some videos coming up with all grain homebrew, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's pretty exciting uh, to get something kind of different on the go. I'm also building a mash tun out of a, my coolers here. Might build uh, two mash tons for you here. So maybe I'll try a couple different things. Uh, wort chillers, all that stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, occasionally malt my own barley to do my own specialty malts. You know what I'm saying? Haven't done it for a while. But uh, I think those might be some things that will be coming soon. So you know what I mean? Ah, into the proper beer drinking attire. I'm not really a mega huge Star Wars fan. It's an okay movie, but uh, you know, when you get an R2D2 uh, pop cooler, first thing that comes to your mind is R2D2 kegerator, right? So, big shout out to Alex from Nova Scotia for donating the R2 unit. Super cool. So, a color shot. Um, yeah, it's red, all right. I'm seeing exactly what you're seeing. Uh, you're seeing through it, slightly transparent. Uh, head's settled a little bit here. It was looking pretty awesome. Still is looking pretty awesome. Wow. It's a nice color. Oh, the hops in here are absolutely phenomenal. This is, it smells like you're in, uh, one of the nicest places on earth, just like in some kind of jungle. That's just, that's absolutely freshness there. Oh, you're getting all kinds of sweetness and some uh, tropical notes from the hops, some uh, Cascadian type aromas as well. Just mixing with those malts like this, uh, I think this is going to taste pretty awesome. Holy shit, was that smooth? Whoa. So right off the bat, like, awesome malts, gotta say, uh, 
fabulous job on the malt bill. Phenomenal. Super creamy head. So smooth. It's just a satin, satin beer. This is um, a little bit above the mark for what I've been getting for Parallel 49. Not that they were like bad or anything. But this is definitely, I haven't had any like real big beers from them. So uh, this is sticky. There is uh, quite a bit of hops in here. This is at 60 IBUs. Uh, only thing I will complain about is they did some like robotic uh, writing here and it's like 60 times 10 and an arrow and one up. I'm guessing a 60 I, I, IBUs. It tastes like 60 IBUs. 10 times one. I don't know what the up and the one thing is. Uh, there's a best before date. Oh no, that's a temperature 279K. I don't know what that is. So uh, just other than that, but I will give props because they do actually... So, ingredients, Cascadian hops, pale and crystal, and victory malts, water, and yeast. So, yeah, they did use Cascade hops. That was not a bad guess. <laughs> but everybody uses Cascade hops, right? Um, Cascadian doesn't necessarily mean Cascade, I guess. I'm not quite sure there, but... Um, so, they actually listed their ingredients, which I think is very important because I I want to learn more about hops, but I never know what the hell everyone's putting in their beer, you know, so it makes it hard. But these smell very fresh, and like with the malts, you're getting a little bit of chocolate kind of in the transition, but uh, this is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm pretty picky about my big beers. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of big beers I don't like, and there's a lot that I do. It just you know, I kind of I kind of need them to be not not uh, overly rich in, in in a lot of things like with pruniness and stuff like that. And this is definitely um, one of the better big beers I've had. So for for what I like though, incredible lacing going on here. And I passed this be this beer quite a few times, and I realized walking by, it, I'm like, this beer is a fabulous price. I think it was like seven bucks, something like that. It was really fucking cheap for up here, like for for a for a big beer like that, for an Imperial Red IPA. I thought seven bucks for six fifty bomber for this beer. That's that's actually not a bad deal. So I thought I'm an idiot for not picking this up, but uh, I was in. Uh, if you can, if you have access to this beer, like if you're in Alberta or British Columbia. Or wherever that if you if you have this in your liquor stores, uh, this is the best beer that I've had from them, hands down. It's uh, it's definitely like for seven fifty. It's like kind of like picking up a good barley wine or something. It's it's that good. It's concealing the alcohol nine point three. Um. You can tell it's big because of the thickness and, and just how everything is. Um, you know, there's a lot of hops in here. There, there's a lot of malt in here. But yet it's extremely drinkable and um, and it's not overly heavy. And I, and I think that's that's really where I, where I start appreciating some of these bigger ones. If they can still be big but yet be drinkable and not too overbearing but still... Yet somehow pack it all in, you know, and and have all that, especially with all these hop oils and, and all these hops in here. I mean, you can see what's going on in the glassware here. I mean, when you see that, you kind of know that, yeah, there are hops in here. So really, just a, a amazing hop bitterness, and I I really kind of zero in on the hops and stuff. So. Um, Really appreciating the hops in here. I mean, this is, uh, I'm just loving the hops. And the malts in the big beers is usually where I start to complain a little bit when the yeast, with the yeast and the malts, uh, not getting any bad flavors yeast wise whatsoever. This is the cleanest fucking big beer ever. Well, and barley wine, I tend to like barley wines over some of the Imperials because, and some of the other, uh, big reds because, like, you know, they get so many uh, fucking pruny, fucked up, heavy flavors that are just a little bit overkill. This is just extremely light for what's going on. Still only 9.3, though. It's not like it's 11 or whatever, but...
Hmm. Yeah, this this is awesome. Fucking awesome. I listed the ingredients, so uh, there was no uh, sugars or anything. So there was no... I just had just some suspicions because, seriously, if you get some of these guys like craft beer style stuff, like their... Let's see. Um, the other ones they have, like their Ruby Red and their... Uh, or their Gypsy Tears. No, this is the Ruby Red. Their Gypsy Tears Red Ale and their other ones. You pour this shit in a glass... You can get like that much head on the beer. And it's as dense as like an uncooked marshmallow. It's just this this head on top of the beer like you've never seen. I actually thought that this was going to be not anywhere near this good. I thought, well, it's going to be... Typical kind of red ale and, and have some a lot of Belgian characteristics. And it doesn't have the Belgian characteristics, you know, and that's kind of why I'm liking this so much. It's more like uh, barley wine. Uh, and I'm still fairly new to barley wine because there's just I haven't seen a lot of it. And now I'm, I'm really liking this and I'm liking this kind of thing a lot more. Uh, so, yeah, you, you kind of take the Belgian-ness out of the equation, and I, I tend to get a bit happier. No, not always. I'm, I'm just generalizing a bit here, and I'm fucking catching a buzz. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely pick this up. If you see this, pick this up. I, I'm telling you, pick this up. This is fucking awesome. I haven't been this excited about a beer in a long time, especially for the price. So, Parallel 49... Great job. Like, uh, yeah, some serious shit going on here. So smooth. I can just, I'm just repeating myself, getting obnoxiously drunk. Um, yeah. Yeah. What do you want me to say? This is, I don't know if I can quite spinal tap it, but it's, it's definitely, uh, up there with the last barley one I did, uh, very similar uh, with the Howie Sound Wooly Bugger. So that was fucking awesome. Uh, this is a very similar beverage. It just happens to be red and uh, and have a ludicrous amount of hops in here. So, well, I'm going to 10 and, 10 and a quarter. It. It's 10.25 out of 11. On the Richter scale. Extremely happy with this beer. So, like I said, five times already. If you have access to the Ruby Red, buy it. Because this is just this is just a red barley wine. And it's fucking awesome. Beer Zerker, and I'm out. Yeah!